It was during this time that Father Duffy joined the famous Fighting 69th, a National Guard regiment. Made up mostly of Irish Catholics, the 69th had a storied reputation and included such notables as Bill Donovan, later considered the father of the CIA, and the poet Joyce Kilmer, best known for his poem, Trees. The armory that he drilled in on Lexington Avenue is still in use today. It was designed so that you could use cavalry in, in the city, and they would bring their guns here and their, all their, their wagons and everything would be right here on the drill floor. And, but this is a place that, it, that has uh, mustered soldiers out for over 100 years. They went out to World War I, they went out to World War II, they went out to Korea, they went out to Vietnam from here. We've mustered time and time again from, from this armory. And I think Father Duffy set a precedent here that has driven this organization throughout its history. There's a uh, spirit de corps here a sense of faith, a sense of destiny, a sense of purpose. I think that was primarily because of Father Duffy. The post-Civil War Industrial Revolution of the late 19th century, which provided efficiencies in factories, also provided efficiencies in combat. It allowed warfare to be carried out in a deadly fashion such as the world had never known casualties were extreme. On one July day in 1916, nearly 20,000 British troops were killed in the Battle of the Somme. Of all the U.S. regiments, the 69th Infantry suffered some of the highest casualties. Of approximately 3,500 members, nearly 850 were killed. As one can imagine, the ministry needs were incredible. Yet Father Duffy and other chaplains just like him risk their lives for their soldiers. I love my country. I love what I do. I love my faith. And I consider it a great honor uh, for me to be following in the footsteps of uh, a man, a great man of sacrifice, a great priest, Father, Father Duffy. Father Duffy did not love war. His soul went out to the men who had to fight it. Duffy would go up and comfort some of these dying soldiers on the battlefield, and it just so affected him that uh, he was seen weeping on the, on the battlefield. And at one time, he held the hand of two brothers as they were dying, and he gave them last rites on the battlefield. He knew these people that he was giving last rites to and caring for spiritually. He knew the wounded that he was praying for. He deployed with them. He was present. He cared deeply for his troops, and he always gave them hope. Even in the midst of death, Father Duffy, from his theology, preached about the hope of eternal life. The point is, he was always there with them. He ate with his soldiers. He slept with his soldiers. And yet, he also was clearly an officer. The other officers recognized that he was one of them. So he was able to bridge that gap very easily. He was at home with every rank. One of the attributes that a military chaplain must have that sets him apart from all other ministries is that a military chaplain must be willing to perform or provide religious support for soldiers regardless of their denominational background or their faith group. While Father Duffy ministered in difficult and dangerous circumstances, he did not minister alone. He served alongside other chaplains and was himself aided by chaplain assistants. We know that Chaplain Duffy had a chaplain assistant. He refers to him at, at times as his orderly. As chaplain assistants, we join in with the, with the chaplains and share that same goal, taking care of the warfighter. That's what the Chaplain Corps is all about. We're there to serve God and we serve others and we forget about ourselves. We put 
our personal life, our personal agendas aside so we can be everything that we need to be to help that soldier, that, that man or woman in the armed forces, whether it's an airman, a sailor, whoever it may be, we're there. These soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coasties of all ranks and all faiths need spiritual care. They need guidance and support. So in that sense, little has changed for chaplains since Father Duffy deployed with his troops. When the war ended, Father Duffy returned and was later assigned to Holy Cross Church on 42nd Street, just off of Times Square. During the decade of the 20s, his ministry impact spread throughout the city and included many of the returning veterans and family members of those who had been killed in the war. He published a diary of his wartime experiences and later, after his death, he was featured in a Hollywood movie starring James Cagney and Pat O'Brien as Father Duffy. More recently, a book about his life was published entitled Duffy's War by the historian Stephen Harris. In 1932, when Father Duffy died, the whole city mourned. His funeral was one of the largest in the city's history. Mourners spilled out of St. Patrick's Cathedral on the Fifth Avenue. Later in 1937, the city of New York commemorated his service by erecting a statue of him in Times Square and designating the areas Duffy Square. It is amazing what this man was able to do. That's who we are as chaplains. That's what we're about. Presence with our people wherever they're at, caring for our people, and giving hope. Then as now, our calling is to care for the living, provide comfort for the suffering, and honor the dead. In reality, few of us will ever have a statue erected in our honor. Few of us will ever serve with the notoriety or fame of a Father Duffy. But we can all serve faithfully and honorably as National Guard chaplains, serving both our congregations and our country. That is our divine calling. <laughs>